Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Roscoe for our online service this morning, a service of St. Paul's in Roscoe and also St. John's Lutheran Church in Bowdle, South Dakota. Today is Palm Sunday. It is the beginning of Holy Week as we gather around God's Word and prepare our hearts and and focus in on our Savior's um, passion history as as he goes to suffer and die for us. That starts today with that, that triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Our service is printed out in the bulletin. You can download that from our website at stpaulsroscoe.com slash documents. And everything's in there, the hymns, the psalm, and the the liturgy as well. Uh, This morning, we're going to begin with our opening hymn then. It's hymn number 716, 716. It's in the blue supplement or, or the bulletin. No tramp of soldiers marching feet. May God bless our worship this morning. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
beloved in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dear friends in Christ, for five weeks of Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today, we come together to begin the solemn celebration of Holy Week. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion his entry that culminated at the empty tomb and follow him with a lively faith. United with him by baptism, we share in his resurrection and new life. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. God, our Father, we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as a king by those who shouted Hosanna and spread their clothing and palm branches in his path. Accept our praise and listen to our prayers as we rejoice in our triumphant King, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You may be seated. Our first lesson for this morning comes from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, and it calls to mind the, the humiliation of Christ. Now, not, um, not humiliation the way we use the term, but the, it, it means to humble himself, um, to set aside his power and glory. He lowered himself so that he could come and do the work that we needed. Philippians, chapter 2, beginning with verse 5. Indeed, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was by nature God, he did not consider equality with, with God as a prize to be displayed. But he emptied himself by taking the nature of a servant. When he was born in human likeness and his appearance was like that of any other man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also exalted, highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is God's word. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 24. You can find it printed on pages 5 and 6 in the bulletin. Psalm 24. We'll sing the psalm together.
Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Palm Sunday is the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 21. We see the, uh, the account from St. Matthew's Gospel of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, telling them, Go to the village ahead of you. Immediately you will find a donkey tied there along with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say, The Lord needs them. And he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king comes to you humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their outer clothing on them, and he sat on it. A very large crowd spread their outer clothing on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them out on the road. The crowds who went in front of him and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. We join now in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess our faith in the triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing our hymn of the day. It's hymn number 130, hymn 130, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our focus this morning is from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. The prophet writes, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow will be taken away and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His kingdom will extend from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. This is God's word. We heard in that gospel reading this morning of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, I'm sure what what you'd expect to hear in the gospel lesson on Palm Sunday. And and, and the people are showing Jesus respect. They're 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 cutting down those tree or the palm branches. They're they're putting their coats in the dust or the mud so that um, they can show him that honor that he deserves. In our Old Testament lesson here, we're going to go back about 500 years before Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We go back to a time when the people of Israel were unsure. They're scared. They're doubting. and, And this is the time when God sends a prophet to remind them of their past and their future. So Zechariah tells them to look for the coming king. He says, look for him because he's a different kind of king with a a different kind of kingdom. Now, Zechariah is sent to the people after they've returned from captivity in Babylon and then Persia. They're to come back, they're to rebuild the city of Jerusalem and specifically rebuild God's temple. Now, the wickedness of the people, their, their disobedience had led to its destruction and so Zechariah spends the first half of the book is telling them to... You know, don't go back into the ways of your fathers. He's rebuking them for for good reason. But chapter 9 is a turning point. In chapter 9, Zechariah tells the people that God's covenant still stood. If the people remain faithful to God, Zechariah says he's going to protect you. And beginning with verse 9, Zechariah tells all about the fulfillment of the new covenant. He points ahead to a king, the Messiah. And he says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Talk about daughters of Zion, daughters of Jerusalem. It's really the the same thing. David built the city of Jerusalem on Mount Zion. So it's it's all talking about the the people, the children of Israel. And the daughters of of Zion and Jerusalem, they would rejoice. In In the gospel reading, we hear the people proclaim, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But as they return and they're, they're sitting in the ruins of Jerusalem, what they, they thought was a, was a glorious city, they're sitting in the ruins and they can, they can still rejoice because Zechariah gives them God's message. Your king comes to you righteous and having salvation. They wanted a king like, like David was or Solomon was. They wanted to see that king enter to the, the shouts of his faithful people, but, but then, then they hear the rest of it too. The king comes in righteousness and having salvation, but it says he'd be humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I go, wait a second, humble? That's not the kind of king they're thinking of. Solomon, you know, humble, poor, kind of along those same lines. Solomon wasn't poor. Now, he did did once ride on a donkey to his coronation, but, but, you know, after that, probably maybe not a whole lot. At least these days, donkeys were for commoners. Why would the daughters of Zion and the daughters of Jerusalem be, be excited about this poor king riding in on a donkey? They, they, they didn't, they've never seen a king like this. 
The kings they knew wanted power and riches and authority. Fifty years earlier, the king of Babylon came and he laid siege to the city. He conquered it. He destroyed it. He took all the valuables and he he took a bunch of the people back to his capital city as captives. He didn't enter on a donkey. He probably had lots of uh, you know horses, chariots, whatever it might have been. And you know today we don't we don't have kings with with authority like they did back then, but. You know, if, a, if, if the president goes to visit somewhere or, or a prime minister comes here to visit, there's usually some kind of welcome, uh, uh, crowds or, or signs or, or something like that. Security teams come ahead of time. You know, for, for us, though, it, we, we still wouldn't think of, of a lowly king as something very appealing. In man's way of thinking, that's not one someone would really want to follow. And, and like the Israelites thousands or sorry, thousand, yeah, like the Israelites thousands of years earlier, it's not what we'd be looking for. Today, mankind desires a, a great king. And, and here's what the people of Israel said to God when, when they demanded a king from him. We want to have a king over us so that we also can be like all the nations and our king can judge us and lead us out to fight our battles. But again, a different kind of king. For this king, it wasn't how he entered lowly on a, on a donkey. This king comes as one who is righteous and just. Justification means that, that he's made us right with God. And St. Paul told the Corinthians, God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ, not counting men's sins against them. No earthly king could do that. Earthly leaders can at most try to protect the lives, the earthly lives of their people, maybe protect the borders, but, but very often they're trying to protect mostly themselves. And when the Old Testament Israelites asked for a king, God warned them very specifically. He says, this is what the king will do. He will take your sons, he will take your daughters, he will take the best of your fields. When the day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you've chosen. And so you look at that, and Jesus wants no part of earthly power or glory. Unlike the kings who abuse their power, our epistle reading, the the first lesson we heard today, that tells us of of the fact that Jesus did the exact opposite. Right? This This is God. And here's what he did. It says, He emptied himself by taking the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is a true king who came to serve his people. And Jesus was definitely a different kind of king. Zechariah tells us he's also going to have a different kind of kingdom. Now, if you know the background of the the kingdoms of Israel, you have the northern ten tribes um, who split off after the death of Solomon. And and they have Ephraim as their capital, but they're conquered by the Assyrians. They're they're carried off, and, and they never really come back as they were. You think of Jesus' day, we hear of the Samaritans. They're the ones that, that the Israelites look down on because they're, they, they don't have pure blood of the line of Abraham because it's, it's those from the northern kingdom that intermarried with other nations. The southern kingdom would be just two tribes and they would be called the kingdom of Judah with Jerusalem as its capital for, um, for a long time, David's descendants as their kings but it would never be the same. God says, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow will be taken away. The new kingdom would have no use for those signs of military power and might. The, the conflict that was raging would be finished. Instead of war and conflict, in this different kind of kingdom, the king, it says, would proclaim peace to the nations. We know when the disciples saw these words, they were thinking, um, they assumed it would be an earthly peace. But this is so much more. Just as the king appeared humble, the kingdom would appear the same way. The peace which the king proclaimed would come from his word. The king's work of death would be the message of peace. Now normally death is an ongoing part of war. 
But in this case, the kingdom would be, uh, or the king, I'm sorry, his death would be the victory. And you know who I'm talking about. We're talking about Jesus who, who we heard in the gospel lesson ride into the, the shouts of praise and acclamation. Now the kingdoms, the northern and southern kingdom would never be reunited the way they were before. But, but here's something. Those who believe who believe in this King, Jesus Christ, those who believe in him would be united. We call it the, the Holy Christian Church on earth. And Jesus promised, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not let it be afraid. You know, there's no need for, for fighting for God's people because He's brought peace to us. For Christians, we desire it that it be true in each and every situation here on earth, but especially with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And yet, what happens? Our egos get the better of us. We have to prove we're right. We hold a grudge. We just can't let things go. And so there's, there's disagreements and, and even stronger bad blood between God's people. Family feuds and, and, and whatever else it may be, instead of finding that peace that God desires for us, we, we still in our sinful natures tend to find that conflict. We know it was that way for the people of Israel as well. Despite the peace he brings, the peace he offers, we, we still turn back to our ways of sin and, and more concerned with those other things. But, you know, I, uh, Zechariah tells us the scope of the kingdom of this king. So he's had a different kind of king, a different kind of kingdom. He says his kingdom will extend from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Now this final thought is a quotation from a psalm of King Solomon. But it had to seem a little bit unrealistic because even when David was king and they were a feared nation, they didn't have those kind of boundaries. They still had enemies that they had to deal with and now they've been allowed to return home by a pagan king. They weren't powerful, they were lowly. How could this kingdom be? And it's a question we want to ask ourselves too at times. Because here's the thing, the same the same sinful nature in us that, that tells us, you know, we, we, we can't let our, we, we have to be, um, we have to get our, you know, what we get, or we need to make sure someone else gets what's coming to them if they've wronged us. That, that whole idea I talked about before with our conflicts and the, the silly, the, the petty quarrels that, dis, uh, that, that force apart families or friends or neighbors. Um, it's, it's the same thing when it, when it comes to maybe God's word. We're not talking about a kingdom, but maybe our, uh, a church or, or a congregation or, or just us as Christians. It, it, we, we want what's the biggest and the best. We want to see visible results, maybe how many people are in the pews, although right, right now there's obviously not, not any, but, but you know what I mean. And we wonder if there's things maybe we need to do if God's Word isn't doing enough. And so it comes back around. We're not talking about a kingdom, but maybe God's church here on earth. Sometimes we think we know better or we wonder why and we, we, we need to turn back to this King to realize what he tells us, the promises he gives. And we, we look and we see Christ's kingdom covers the, the whole earth and the hearts of his people. As true God, he rules over all creation now. He rules over his church. He says his word does what he desires of it. His word will not return to him empty. So whether it's a packed church on a Sunday morning or a pastor preaching to empty pews, but, but hopefully plenty of people online or listening at home. It's not about me and what I'm saying and how eloquently I can, how, how eloquently I can say it. 
When you go out and, and talk to someone who needs to hear it, it's, it's not about you getting everything just right and knowing every word by memory. It's, it's trusting that God's word is the power to work in someone's heart. Because God's word is what worked in your heart. God's word with, with water and holy baptism made you his own dear child. God's word, as you went through catechism class or Bible information class, worked and strengthened that faith in your heart so that you know this precious truth. And so as true God, again, Jesus watches over all creation. He preserves us. He takes care of us even in the midst of these trials and troubles. But what we see here in this lesson from Zechariah then is it's almost a preview of the Great Commission. Jesus is saying that his kingdom will stretch to all corners of the world. And in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says to preach the good news to all creation. He gives us the command to tell others about the Gospel message to tell others about his kingdom. And you know, as we, as we look and we think about what's happening today, whether it's what's happening in our world and, and maybe a little bit strange as we'd say to celebrate, or even the fact that we look at what happens in Jerusalem, his great entry, his triumphant entry, we celebrate it even though we know what's going to happen just here at the end of the week. but we rejoice because Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. And he was going to do it for us. That's the greatest triumph. For all the times we've doubted the power of his word or wondered what we could do to make it more um, exciting for someone so they might listen to it, for all the times we've held on to petty grudges with, with family and friends and neighbors, the, the ones we hold on to today, we, we say, Lord, have mercy, and we look and we confess our sins. We look and we know he's pointing us to his cross where he bore those sins, where he took them and he paid the penalty. And so he says, rejoice. Rejoice and sing his praise on this day. Rejoice knowing exactly what he's going to do for you. He's going to pay for your sins. He's going to redeem you, to buy you back from the grip of sin, death, and hell. We know the, the winds of support and enthusiasm, enthusiasm shift quickly for Jesus this week. But it's all part of God's plan. All, all part of Christ's work. And that, that points us to look for our coming king as well. It points us to a, a different kind of king with a different kind of kingdom. And, and that peace is yours. That peace is yours. Because his kingdom is forever. Our life with him is eternal. Amen. Please stand. Now this peace of God that transcends all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the singing of Create in Me. Please stand for the prayer of the church.
Lord Jesus, you are the King of heaven and earth. We join the first Palm Sunday worshipers in praising and glorifying you for coming to this earth to be our Savior. Though you are one with God the Father and Lord of all, you humbled yourself and became one with us. Thanks be to you for living a life of perfect conformity to God's holy law in our place. Praise be to you for being obedient to death, even death on a cross, to redeem us from sin cause our voices to blend with those who sang your praises as you rode into Jerusalem. Move us to confess you before others as our Lord. Help us to proclaim the message of peace and forgiveness to people of all nations. Use us to assure all people that by your blood that your blood has cleansed them from sin and set them free from slavery to sin, death, and the devil. Move us to dedicate all we are and have to your glory. Lord Jesus, you are king over all the earth. Bless the nations of this world with wise rulers and good government. Let peace prevail. Grant success to the businesses and industries of our, of our land to serve for the common good. Cause all employers to be honest and fair-minded and all employees to be diligent and faithful. Look with favor on our nation's schools as, as they meet from afar. Be with those who teach and those who learn. Comfort the sick and the afflicted with the assurance of your care and protection. Strengthen the faith of the dying. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Dear Savior, as we walk with you this week toward Calvary, Keep us focused on your purpose for coming into this world and on our calling to spread this wonderful message of salvation. Hear us for your mercy's sake and as we join in praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We continue with our closing hymn. It's hymn number 133, Right On, Right On in Majesty. We'll sing the first two verses, hymn 133. Thank you for joining us this weekend here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Roscoe and uh, a service of St. Paul's and also St. John's Lutheran Church in Bowdle, South Dakota. 
I have some announcements for you here this week. If you have the bulletins printed off, you can look at them on pages uh, 10 through 12. Otherwise, I'll kind of go through them here. If you'd, if you'd like a visit from me at this time, please, please talk, uh, give me a call and we can talk about how we can arrange that for our members who would uh, like to receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. We can also arrange for a, a time for private com, uh, communion as well. Uh, my number's in the, in the bulletin, or you can call the, the parsonage as well. Um, thank you to those who donated for the, the tablets for the nursing homes. Um, it's, it's a great blessing for the, the people there to try and at least have some kind of contact with family members and loved ones, and I, I know it's very much appreciated, so thank you for that. Um, Holy Week services online this year, Un, and, and I say unfortunately in the sense we'd love to be together. But we know that um, we, we can still gather around God's Word, even if we're further apart. Um, we are going to do just, just our online services um, like, we've, like we've been doing. Um, Maundy, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, we'll all have services. Um, look for Thursday and Friday. Those services will be uploaded probably um, sometime in the afternoon. And then Sunday morning, uh, next week, it'll be on there um, when, you, when you get up next Sunday morning. I think um, I'm also looking at doing one probably Saturday night. Um, we'd normally have our Easter vigil service, and I know um, a lot of our members really enjoy that. So we'll, we'll do one and maybe just kind of focus on those Old Testament readings that we hear that, that point ahead to the coming um, of the Messiah. So um, keep an eye on that. I'm hoping to do that. Each day this week, though, um, we're going to have daily devotions. That's in the bulletin as well. Um, so Pastor Laudi and myself uh, we'll switch off days. We're going to be looking at what happened each day during Holy Week. Um, today, the Palm Sunday devotion will be up um, on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. Um, Facebook pages for St. Paul's and Roscoe and St. John's and Bowdle. So you can find them there um, and, and just kind of go along, take that journey with us and, and use that as, as part of your, your Holy Week meditation and preparation as we follow our Savior's journey to Calvary. If you'd like more information or you can't find those, definitely um, give me a call, let me know, and, and we'll point you to them. And then finally, on the back, um, we have a couple opportunities as a, um, our congregations, but as a church body, to, to gather and worship online together. I know it's not quite the same, but um, tonight at 6 o'clock, um, 6 p.m., Sunday, April 5th, Palm Sunday, um, there's going to be a live stream from uh, our synod president, Mark Schrader, Pastor Mark Schrader, will have a message at 6 Central, and I'll have the link on the Facebook page if you need it. Um, email or something like that, send me a text message, give me a call, and I can get it to you if you'd like to watch that tonight at 6 o'clock. And then also, next Sunday, there's going to be an Easter service from our Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. Now, there'll be just a few people in the chapel there as they do it, but President Schrader will be the liturgist, and then our um, seminary president, Pastor Earl Trepto, will be the guest preacher. So another, another opportunity, they're calling that one, gather at the empty tomb um, from, from all, all corners of the earth. So a blessing to be able to do that. Um, those are my announcements for the week. God's blessings to you, please. Um, please don't hesitate to call me if, if you need something, if you need pastoral care. Um, I'm, I'm still here I'm trying, to, trying to serve you the best way that I can at this time. And just like you're trying to continue on with your daily lives as, as well as you can as well. So um, we continue to, I continue to keep you all in my prayers and, um, and, and look forward to when we can gather together again, but uh, continuing to serve you even now. God's blessings on your day and your week. Thank you.